we are at 9 a.m. Good morning. I am Mario Ganjimi, the chair of the NDTA Capital Committee, and we'll be conducting this morning's meeting. I hereby call the meeting of the Capital Committee to order at 9 a.m. In accordance with the live streaming law, this meeting is being conducted video via video conference and live stream on the NDTA Capital Committee page. For the record, member Gaines is unable to attend today's meeting. However, we do have a quorum and will continue with this meeting. As a reminder, all members of the Capital Committee will have their video active during the entirety of the meeting. But note that member Enzer is having te technical difficulties, so is participating via telephone. To minimize background noise, I ask that everyone mute your phones, unless of course you're presenting or answering a question, and then we ask that you turn your video on and your audio on while presenting or speaking, and then when, when you're done, turn it off and go back to mute. There are no members of the public, no elected officials, and no media that have pre-registered to comment, so we can move on to agenda, agenda item number one, is which is approval of open session meeting minutes of July 7, 2022. So I am looking for a motion. Good move, Mr. Chairman, Member Cox. Member Cox moves, Member Enzer. Second. Member Enzer second. seconds. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, great, and I'm an aye. So that we're moving on to agenda item number two, where Joe is going to talk to us about NDTA 2019-01B, which is construction management and inspection services under the SBR category. I'm sure he's coming somewhere. <laughs> Okay, here I am. There you are. <laughs> good, good morning, members and others. Uh, my name is Joe. My name is Joe Jakowski. I'm the OEC Director of Construction. This morning, I am here to seek recommend approval for from the Capital Committee to present MDTA Project Number AE two zero one nine zero one B. This contract is a Small Business Reserve Construction Management Inspection Services contract. The services to be performed under those contracts are as follows. The services to be performed under this small business reserve contract are comprehensive construction management inspection services for the Maryland Transportation Authority. The consultant shall provide professional consultant management services related to supplementing and supporting the construction phase of the MDTA consolidated transportation projects. Consultant shall perform services in the following general areas services shall include but not limited to constructability reviews uh, conduct detailed inspections for all construction work including the erosion and settlement control portion and assist authority compliance officers with monitoring and enforcement of minority business enterprise goals so this contract is uh, one contract we're awarding uh, it was advertised September 25th of 2019. Uh, there are five year durations. Um, the duration uh, will begin uh, anticipated September of 2022. Uh, there was no protest, 100% uh, toll revenue. Uh, there were eight RFPs and one proposer who is O'Connell Lawrence, who is a longtime um, consultant for the MDTA. Uh, they're considered like an A consultant. Uh, the contract award amount is $2 million. Uh, looking at the MBE, the advertised goal was 26%. It was uh, sub goals of 6% African American, 2% Hispanic American, 9% woman owned, and others, other MBE uh, participation is 8%. And we had 1% VSB, so they gave us the 26%. Uh, looking at OCNL, their overall goal was 26%. Uh, they came in at 10% for African American, 5% for Hispanic, 10% for women owned businesses, and they met the 1% VSBE. Uh, we're excited to get this SBR started. This is our first small business reserve contract. Uh, any questions? 
I'll, I'll start with a question. I, I think you said you had eight proposers on this project. Yes, we sure did. We had, and, uh, I can mention. There, there was a technical process they had to go through. So that's, it was on the technical merits. I'm assuming that you chose O'Connell and Lawrence. It was, it was technical and oral presentations. Okay. And uh, the eight, which one of them was OCNL, uh, they were chosen and, by, uh, a, by a panel of three. Gotcha. And I assume our goal was to choose just one. It wasn't like on some of our other contracts where we, we pick multiples. Um, no, this was the SBR. This was kind of carved out of the bigger contracts. Right. Um, this was right. our first one. It was kind of like our test. Um, we're really happy we had, we had you know, at least eight uh, proposed contracts. So, um, yeah, um, no, in the future, we're, we're looking to do more. Actually, maybe at a, a while we're talking about SBR, maybe it would be good to for someone to I know what SBR means, but it'd be nice for us to understand exactly what it means technically. What what size projects that kind, what size firms are allowed to be that kind of stuff? So it might be a future. Uh, would you would you gentlemen agree that are members of the capital committee? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just throwing out a future topic uh, for us to just so we understand it better. That's all. Good. There, okay. Is there sure. uh, any any, uh, any questions from from anybody on the? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. All right. So I have a motion to approve. Member Enzer. Second. Member Enzer seconds. Is there any any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 And I'm an aye. So you got your approval of your uh, your uh, SBR contract. So that's exciting. And uh, let us know how it works out. Thank you, members. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Now we get to move on to talking about the I-895 bridge and Baltimore Harbor Tunnel Rehabilitation Project. Awesome. <laughs> Good morning, members and others. I'm Bill Rando. I'm Deputy Director of Construction. I'm going to be presenting on the uh, I-895 Canton Viaduct Bridge Project. Um, you have the presentation in front of you. Uh, so the team for the project was the MDTA Engineering Construction. The design team was Whitman Record and Associates, uh, the Wilson T. Ballard Company, Johnson Merriman and Thompson Incorporated, Majeski's and Master, and uh, sub, sub uh, consultants. And the contractor for the uh, um, contract was Tudor Prini and Corporate and Swank Construction Company. Uh, in front of you, there is a uh, map location that shows the uh, layout of the uh, project, uh, Baltimore City and Industrial Urban Corridor. Uh, the purpose and the scope, uh, replaced the Canton Viaduct, constructed in 1957 and widened in 1985. Uh, overall poor condition, MDTA's only poor re rated uh, bridge, uh, replaced the uh, Hollibert uh, Avenue ramp bridge, constructed in 1957, overall fair condition, rehabilitated uh, Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, constructed in 1957 and rehabilitated in 1985. Uh, Deck approaches and retaining walls, interior tile, and fire suppression stand pipes. <clears throat> Project site features Canton Viaduct Bridge, crosses 23 railroad tracks, three interstate ramps, three city streets, existing bridges, northbound 28 spans, southbound 29 spans, 3,300 feet long, uh, two abutments and 55 piers, foundations, steel H piles, concrete filled uh, monotube piles, and spread floatings. Project site features on 95 overpass built late 1970s, 800 feet length of 895, vertical clearance under I-95, varies between 14 foot seven and 15 foot nine. Vertical clearance under 895, minimum, minimum over railroad, 20 foot four inches, and minimum over Ponca Street, 18 foot two inches. 
I-95 columns, limited alternative alignments, limited widening of 895. Um, the project site features Halliburton Avenue ramps, bridges, crosses three railroad tracks, one city street, uh, existing bridge, 11 spans, nine, 595 foot long, one abutment and 10 piers, foundation, steel pot H piles, spread footings, retained filled sections, 100 foot long. Project site features Baltimore Har Harbor Tunnel, two tubes, each over 7,600 feet long, two 11 foot lanes, four retaining walls, total length over 3,100 foot long. Project site features railroads, CNX, marine terminals, console energy, four inbound tracks, four outbound tracks, Norfolk Southern, nine tracks, CSX Railroad, three tracks, and Canton Railroad, three tracks. Stakeholders, MDTA, Baltimore City. Mr. Chairman, I interrupt. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Bill, on, on the uh, project site features, that is where it was completed on the rehab this past couple of years? Correct. Yeah, okay, got it. Thank you. So the stakeholders on this project was MDTA, Baltimore City, uh, DPW, water sewer, storm drains, uh, D DOT, the traffic conduit and uh, fire department, the railroad, BG&E, gas and electric businesses. Um, direct impacts was Mid-Atlantic, where uh, wholesale lumber, uh, Jim's Diner and uh, GAF. Businesses served by uh, I-895, Amazon, and John Hopkins, Bayview. And there's another map of the um, of the structures on the uh, project. Uh, structures S-5 and structures S-3 and S-1. And the next page also uh, shows the structures S-1, S-2, and S-4. Some more of the uh, project highlights, uh, the structures, structure S1, 3,155 foot long, uh, 19 spans northbound and 18 spans southbound, two abutments and 35 piers, hybrid steel plate girders, grade 75 stainless steel rebar, lightweight foam concrete fill, structure two Halliburton ramp, uh, 42, 410 foot long, three spans on 200 foot radius and uh, steel plate girders, grade 75 stainless steel rebar. Some more uh, project highlights, structures, uh, structure S3, 437, 437 foot long pile supported MSE wall, lightweight foam concrete fill, Accommodated feature future modular building structure S4 Hollerberg ramp 260 foot long MSC wall porous backfill structure S5 197 foot long pile supported MSC wall lightweight foam concrete fill and cast in place concrete pavement. Can, can this is Mario? Can I stop you for a second? Sure. Um, can you talk about the lightweight foam concrete fill a little bit, just because the geotechnical engineer in me uh, got excited when you started saying that? <laughs> so, so this lightweight fill was used because we use the um, because of the poor conditions of the soil and stuff. We used a lot of the um, micro piles, and we had to use a lot of this lightweight fill in order to bring it up and and support the. Um, MSE walls to build the MSE walls, and we used it to support the roadway for, for it. And it was it was easier than using the granular earth, and a lot lot stable as you brought it up. What was the what was the product you used? Was it just out of curiosity? It was like a almost like a flowable fill product. It was okay. like a, um 
almost like a cement cementor mix. Okay, so it was, it was truly it was truly like a lightweight flow. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep, gotcha. Yep, okay. Because yep. I've seen some other other uh, product. There's a, there's a company up not too far from from me up up but up in Pennsylvania that that's Aero Aggregates I think is what they call themselves. That that that's what they do. It's mostly for lightweight. Yeah. Fit. Cool. We use a lot of red hair. Yeah, I, I just like I said, I saw it and I knew why, so I wanted to ask the question. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I'm looking up the supplier now, Bill. I'll find it in a second. Yeah, I'm just, I was just curious. You, you, it's not it's not a big deal. I just just wondering. All right, um, the foundations. Um, uh, structure S1, micro piles, and H piles. Um, we did a um, value engineering on this project, um, the nine piers to H piles, um, structure S2, hollow bird ramp, uh, H piles, and the structure S3, uh, micro piles, and H piles. Structure S4, the hollow bird uh, ramp, leveling pad um pads that's because we use the um msc walls on that also and structure s5 micro piles and the um high mass lights and uh sign structures drilled piers safety enhancements the uh commercial vehicle inspection area increased 895 bridge width the its improvements and uh, the um cameras the lane use control signals the overhead heights uh detection systems the automatic lane control systems and the uh, 42 inch barrier wall uh parapet at the uh, um, 95 columns and the uh, 95 895 approach shoulder widening and full light lighting replacements on the project uh the, the tunnel the tunnel approaches new uh lmnc overlay uh, approximately um, 168,000 square feet per tube and approximately 70,000 square feet on the approaches. New precast concrete trench drains on the approaches. Uh, Repointed to the granite uh, fascia on the retaining walls. New tiles selected areas on the tunnel walls. There were 43,500 square feet in the stand pipe rehabilitation and structural curve and uh, place pipe liner. Can you explain real quick what LMC overlay is? I know it's the it's, laminate or the, it's the uh, latex modified. Latex, latex. Right. <laughs> latex modified concrete, right? right? Concrete, yeah. But part of me, Bill, while while we're stopping on the question, I looked it up. The uh, supplier for the the lightweight fill was uh, G a company called GeoCell. Geo. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, I do. Uh, I mentioned Aero Aggregates. If uh, if you guys ever want to hook up with them, learn more about them, let me know because I, I happen to know the guy that started the company. We're a brilliant, brilliant engineer and PhD and a whole bunch of other initials after his name. But really good, really good guy, really good company. And he's definitely done some uh, really cool stuff. So if you guys ever want to want to do that, let me know and I'll, I'll set that up. I think we're good. We can keep going. Okay. So here's some more highlights of the uh, tunnel work. You know, the tunnel and approaches. See some pictures. We'll, you know, capturing some pictures of the uh, tunnel and the latex <clears throat> modified concrete overlay inside the tunnel. And then some of the challenges and um, solutions, you know. The girder erection, you know, met with steel fabricators, um, developed girder erection plans and reports, uh, conducted constructability workshop, MDTA, WRA industry, industry uh, experts, review 60% plans, access, ABC techniques, CPM schedule, um, pre-construction, micropile, low test program, Developed the CPM schedule during design. A lot went into the project, you know, during the development phase of the project. It was pretty challenging, you know, due to the 95, the vertical clearance, setting the girders underneath 95 and over the railroads. 
some more of the uh, challenges and solutions. Uh, traffic management systems, contractor installed and maintained, real time congestion warning and travel time, equipment, six portable sensors, and uh, 13 PVMSs, uh, remote data collections and automated processing, speed threshold volumes and lane occupancies, user identification, notifications via text, email, and MDT overrides. Um, incident management plans developed for 895 and single lanes, um, collaborated efforts between uh, WRA, MDTA, first responders, uh, include staging, access, police, VRT, emergency response, routing, queues, relief strategies, um, project success, designs, um, dictated resources, tackle challenges head on, milestones, um, submittals and permitting, railroads agreements and approvals, constructions, um, dictated resources, um, partnering meetings, recovery, recover tunnel scope and of work, um, dictated resources of predominant review, um, over 650 working drawings, there were 600, 360 RFIs on the project. Did and you have to? Did you have to start with the railroad about 50 years ago in order to get with the <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it took a long, a lot of, a lot of coordination with the railroad, a I'm lot sure. of coordination. I'm sure. God bless you. <laughs> From cradle to grave. And the project success, uh, construction costs, you know, uh, the original cost was 890 million and uh 380,000 and the final was uh 188 million 650,000 so we came in under, under budget on this job and right. came in came in under time on the project so it was a good success we we should uh we should brag about that oh, oh. <laughs> And, and and reason why I say that and, and yeah and congratulations uh, that's that's awesome considering the scope of that project the complexity of that project because as we know that are on the capital committee there was a lot of uh, pushback on the selected contractor for this project a lot of pushback and I mean I even got a phone call from one of the folks that didn't get it saying <laughs> you're gonna get screwed so this is this is really good news to hear and um, very good something we your your team needs to be proud of because I'm I'm going to say that the contractor was successful because our team did a great job of pushing them and holding their feet to the fire so uh, congratulations on that that was a that was a that was a very challenging job for everybody and a lot of sleepless nights for everybody out here for two years for two straight years I mean it was a push yeah, but yeah. The, the contractor really, I'll, I'll give it to them. They really stepped it up when they needed to step it up. And they were a challenging contractor, but they, they did step it up. I'll, I'll give it to them. Right. Well, no, again, uh, congratulations. Uh, again, we should we should <clears throat> probably highlight this, Will, at, at some future board meeting, I think. I think it's important to, uh, we don't have to, you don't have to go through the whole, you know, what we're going through right now, but I think it should be highlighted so that the board knows um just just do that slide right there present it to the board full board let them know how successful we were on this large project yep so, sounds good i just want to echo uh one other clear measure of success is uh we won the project of the year for this guy yes yes there you <laughs> so, go Look, you're driving the trophy. are you drinking out of that right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's so big, oh, I can barely oh. lift the darn thing. <laughs> nice. well, and, and I think that, and I know we highlighted that at the at, at the last board meeting. Uh, I just, again, I think winning the winning that award is great. However, as a board who has fiduciary responsibility for the MDTA, that slide right there is uh, one of the best ones I've seen since I've been on the board. Yeah, tells the story. Thank tells you. the story. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you guys. We, keep in, we keep interrupting you, but this is exciting stuff. And again, uh, the it's all good. Comes out. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you were to the questions anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did a pretty good job of asking them as we went through it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, member Enzer, do you have any, any questions uh, for, for these folks? 
Oh, it's just awesome project. It's just so appealing. It's just yeah. really, really well done. Very well done. Great. Member Cox, got anything to add or? No, good. Well, Thank you. Bill, thank That's you. So again. Congratulations to the team. I think, you know, we, we heard we heard that it was an award-winning project at our last board meeting. I think that this gave us an even better idea of <laughs> what a big deal that really is. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, I would take that one slide and, and I would throw that into our, our board materials for the next and, time. And, yeah, and I think overall the public, I don't think we had too much – the public, you know, anything about the public, you know, from the public, you know, complaints while building good. it either. So good, 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 good. Well, maybe you make this part of your executive director uh, report at the next meeting just and just present that slide or something. I don't know. Or just the, the data. I just we need to brag about this because uh, I, I think the, you know, we've got people who like to beat us up for a lot of things. And gosh darn, man, we came under budget. And we, we were not as intrusive to the public because we were able to get the schedule reduced. I mean, this is all this. Everything about this is good news. Good news. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, to Bill's point about the public and managing it, you know, the active traffic management system that we had on this project that gave the travel times every day and just really communicated well what the customers should experience on their drive it was top shelf and i think you know for such a challenging job that did have delays we our marketing team uh you know communications worked really well with oec to get folks to move to our other facilities and 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 of course even leading up to this the planning that went into it made it such a success you know all the agreements with the railroads getting the i-95 widening done on schedule ahead of time so that we flowed into this project in a in a great position. Uh, we just did a lot of things well on this one, and uh, you know, hats off to to all of the team that that worked on it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, mem member Enzer, I'm going to give you an opportunity to move for adjournment so that Member Cox can be the second. Thank you. Okay. I I'm, I'm, I make a motion that we adjourn. Just... All right. Member Cox. All right, so uh, any discussion? I can't imagine any. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And I'm an aye. So great. Well, fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Have a great. Thanks, uh, Appreciate it.